Welcome to a personal interview with Barbara Frank, conducted on April 27th by Mitch G, part one. What has inspired you as you were a young girl, or what was like the biggest inspiration to you? Oh gosh, that's hard to say. There have been a lot of them. Uh, my mother was a big influence on me, uh, in particular for my environmental interest. When we were little, we always hiked all over the hills and never picked, you know, if there weren't many blooming that year, you only picked one or none. And yeah. you didn't kill snakes, you didn't kill bugs. I mean, those were all part of the, the whole ecosystem. So I was learned to, uh, I was raised to respect nature. And I think my work, my life work has reflected that. Could you please tell me one of your fondest memories with your mom? Uh, probably just all those years of hiking up on the hill. Uh, and discovering different things, picking berries, uh, seeing wild animals, uh, doing it with my brothers. And I've done some research and I've heard about uh, the Sierra Club. Could you please tell me about what your role is in the Sierra Club or what you do? Okay, that's pretty complex because it goes back so many years. Uh, when we moved to Lexington, my, after I was married, my husband, I taught school for a few years. And then my husband was transferred to Lexington, Kentucky to run the train company plant, the train, T-R-A-N-E, mm -hmm. you know, the heating and air conditioning plant there. And uh, they were, we had fun discovering the state. It's a beautiful state, has a lot of economic problems, some horrendous political problems, but a gorgeous state. And we did had a lot of good times discovering their, their lovely natural parks, the... Uh, the, the, there's a uh, the Red River Gorge, which is sort of grandly referred to as the Grand Canyon of the East, but it's a very okay. spectacular place. And they were going to dam the Red River Gorge. And it was one of the things we had thought had found and thought was so lovely. And so here they're going to dam it and flood the whole area with lots of natural bridges, unique plant species and whatnot. And they decided, uh, well, they, had to, they said they had to do it to keep, get drinking water for the city of Lexington. Okay, seems pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. But uh, we said, well, wait a minute. You know, there were there was this group of people who came forward and said, no, oh, I think we can put the dam 40 miles away, have the same effects, and so forth. So I joined that group and started writing letters and talking to legislators and just got very involved. And indeed, uh, it took us about 25 years, but it was finally declared a scenic and wild river, and the river was safe. People of Lexington still have drinking water. And that was when I first learned you don't leave it all up to the experts. And the group was doing it was the Sierra Club. And I've been involved 40 years since then as a member. Oh, I should, I should say before we finish that, I'm currently on the national board of directors of the Sierra Club. So that means I attend a lot of national meetings and but, work on um, national issues. What accomplishment are you most proud of and why? Oh, my. Lots of them over the years. I, you know, one of the most recent ones was we fought off a tire burning facility over in Preston, Minnesota. They were going to burn. It was going to be the, one of the largest ones in the world, and you get huge, huge pollution problems when you burn tires. And uh, there was all kinds of. We thought some kind of um, doubtful reasons given in the agencies were going along with it in Minnesota. And so we had a group of citizens who's in Minnesota and in Wisconsin, because we'd have been right downwind, and said, well, now wait a minute, this shouldn't happen. And so we started writing letters and making phone calls, going to meetings, uh, and eventually we got the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency to reverse itself, first time ever, as far as we know. And uh, they decided that maybe it wasn't a good idea to put a tire plant there. Southern Minnesota, uh, southeastern Minnesota, has huge uh, asthma problems. And it's a very rural area. You wonder where all this is coming from uh, and what the cause is. So the last thing we want to do is add to that. And besides, it would affect us, too, and our children here. So that, that that's a more recent one. But, you know, stopping the mining in northern, sulfide mining in northern Wisconsin, uh, working at coal-fired power plants, it's just been a whole variety of issues. Again, in 40 years, that's a lot of... Yeah. time to do different things. Yeah. Um, Can I toss a few other accomplishments yeah. out? 
Sure. I'm also uh, was a founder of the Hickson Forest Nature Center. I don't know if you've been there. Mm -hmm. They do trips, yeah. and uh, I feel very strongly about how important that is. And now we're working on doing a newer building and a bigger building and uh, better facilities. So that's uh, important. And then I was a founder, one of the co-founders of the uh, Mississippi Valley Conservancy, which is also saving land. Has done a lot in Hickson Forest and done a lot on the bluff tops along the uh, you know backdrop to the city and I was doing it in a larger area I think we've got about 3,000 acres saved okay green space um, are there any current um, problems that you're working on right now with the Sierra Club oh yes global warming is the big concern uh, the fact that we're changing the climate with our, some of the emissions we're releasing, the carbon dioxide in particular, uh, that is the number one priority for the Sierra Club right now, and we're all working on that. Okay. Um. I should add, backtrack, uh, this really wasn't the Sierra Club, but the Mississippi Valley Conservancy. Uh, my husband and I donated our land. We have some land just south of the city that will then be used uh, as part of that project. Oh dear, I had these all organized. Until I took them out. Here. And it's a picture of the two of us standing out in the land. It's not a huge parcel, but it, it will be an important part of that, keeping the bluffs uh, not all developed, which is good environmentally because you don't get the same runoff that you do when you start building, it's constructing all of that and, and opening up the land. And it's also a, will be a good place for hiking trails and public access. Um, what exactly is the Kind for Congress committee, and what is your role in it? Oh, I'm a member of uh, Ron Kind's River Advisory Committee. Uh, so I'm working with him as a congressman, and I have a picture of that. Um, as I say, I had these all together until I took them out to be scanned. So my apologies. Uh, there's a picture of me standing with the, the congressman on one of our river tours. But we work on river issues, uh, which right now is the big one is navigation, expansion on the upper river, uh, pollution generally, water quality, that sort of thing. That's working with him as a congressman, working on his campaign to reelect him, which is a separate issue. I'm on that committee because I've been very involved with many of the legislative races for Senate, Congress, state races as well. Political junkie. I like working on the issues and I like, if you care about the issues, you know you have to get good people in to do the right job. Um, can you tell us a major way you've helped out the community in the past few years? Well, I'd say the tire burning plant was one that definitely had local impact. Uh, working on, uh, right now, one of the things I'm working on uh, is the uh, proposal for all the changing a bridge to Isla Plume Park and they're going to the proposal is that they put a bike and hike trail on that one bridge at, which will be a temporary one as they repair the old one and it will take emergency vehicles but eventually that they will move to a new bridge but they will keep the hiking and biking trail and that will become part of a route through the city that would connect with Gunderson Lutheran so people could use it for commuting or recreational uh, hiking and biking and they will connect with a much larger network of river of uh, state trails and uh, so it would be a marvelous recreation and uh, tourism uh, uh, <coughs> success. <clears throat> so environment is like a love to you. It, it's you love seeing environment in all the views? Yeah, I, I think you would have to say it's a, a definitely a passion of mine. I mean, I really care about it. I think uh, the, you know, it's easy to think that we live in this very artificial world and the environment almost doesn't matter. I think a lot of people live in an urban, you know, a city situation. You buy your meat at the grocery store and, you know, everything is kind of, it seems like we're operating whatever willy-nilly, totally independent of that natural world. And especially if you're in a very large city. Here, of course, we are surrounded by nature and have lots of parks, and so we have more access. But yeah, it's, uh, uh, 
an important issue to me and it needs uh, more definition, it needs more support. The environmental movement has been an important one, but it doesn't have enough people who care. You know, the, mile, the, the fuel we use for our automobiles, how we drive, how we heat our houses, coal plants. I mean, they're just a whole big complex of issues that affect the environment, which affect all of us. I mean, it will affect our economies, it will affect how we live, how we work, how we survive. Um, do you think that kids in school nowadays aren't learning um, the importance of environment as much as they need to? Well, you'd be a better judge of that than I am, I, I think. Uh, I think there's a lot of effort. Uh, for instance, have you taken trips out to Hickson Forest Nature Center? Oh, uh, we went to, um, yeah, in the fall. In the fall, just once, okay. And and you've had here the, the school of the, what is it called, the school of the river? river? Yeah. Yeah, which is a wonderful opportunity to learn about the Mississippi and, and the importance. I mean, the, this is one of those huge rivers that you can see from space. I mean, it's just an immense natural resource. Huge, wonderful fishery. Uh, barge conduit, you know, it's a, it's a very big multi-purpose river. So learning about, I'm assuming here you're probably learning, focusing really on the natural environment of the river. And that's been one of my issues for many, many years because uh, that river is so important to all of us. Do you spend a lot of time on the Mississippi River? Like some, yeah, observing some. Our favorite, one of our favorite places is uh, Goose Island. Oh yeah, I love that. Do you? Wonderful mm -hmm. place to observe nature. Wonderful place. I remember as a child, my father uh, worked with Badger Sportsmen, and they would go down and rebuild a lot of the roads, which would, every spring would get washed out. And so I felt kind of, I feel kind of a, an ownership there because of work that he did, and we had a lot of picnics there. And, uh, did a lot of uh, oh catching frogs and pollywogs and uh, just just experiencing nature in a very positive way. River, it was a huge. I mean, they had, mm -hmm. it had to be a couple mile expanse that they would swim down to Goose Island and, and graze there. Mm. Um, but you can always find something interesting happening. I, my husband and I love to canoe, so we do a lot of canoeing and poking around in backwaters, and you always see something unusual like. Uh, not so long ago, we saw a, a snake swimming along with a frog caught sideways in its mouth. You know, just <laughs> I see you have some some of your own things that you've brought. Do you want to share some of those with us? Okay. Uh, well, this was my uh, my statement of asking for support when I was running for an election in the Sierra Club. It, the members vote on that, and that had a recent picture taken with it. I received a, a special award from the Sierra Club, and that's shown there, and here's an article about it, for a long period of service to the club, and, uh, and I have been involved for, I say, almost 40 years with that. Uh, working with Mississippi Valley Conservancy, which is a, a, a land conservancy trying to buy land or purchase land development rights to protect land in the Cooley region. And this worked well because I've also been a member of the board of Gunderson Lutheran and was president of the Lutheran Hospital Board and uh, we got the hospital to donate some of its land behind the new clinic out there towards this Mississippi Valley Conservancy project and this was a press event we had about that. There's another article in, in the hospitals, the, the Gunderson Lutheran uh, Bridges magazine that says 55 acres offered for wetland protection and, and uh, restoration, which is that same project. Uh, let's see. I've done a lot of there here. I've been involved at Gunderson Lutheran for a long time um, on the foundation board and then on the hospital board and now then I was on the merged Gunderson Lutheran board and uh, I, I, as a community member and I'm off of that now. But that's been an, in, an important part. In fact, one of the things I'm especially interested in the environment is environmental health issues, like mercury in the environment, which is not good for anybody. Uh, the uh, the fact that so many of the synthetics we're introducing into the environment have negative impacts, particularly on children and the elderly. 
which covers all of us here. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I have been very involved with uh, environmental health issues, and so then working on Gunderson Lutheran as a health facility was a very logical connection. This was just me with uh, the board. And then I was involved when they did their merger. So here's articles about that. Uh, I, I did tell you I was a founder of the Hickson Forest Nature Center. Here, Pat Wilson, another founder, and I are working setting up some of the displays. I've always been a political junkie, so I've been very involved with with uh, lobbying and going to Washington, going to Madison, uh, writing letters. In fact, that's why I, what I was doing this morning, writing a letter on the bike trail that we're proposing for Iowa Clean. Got to meet the president, couldn't find my picture. I've got a picture of me standing with President Clinton because I was invited as one of the national environmental leaders to go and appear. There were about, uh, I think about 150 of us who were invited. Uh, to go speak with them, which was kind of nice. Here's me lobbying for Protect Wisconsin's Rivers, stop the Exxon mine, which was going to be the sulfide mine up there, and we, after about five years, were successful with that. But it just takes people fighting, working, offering better proposals, saying, hey, wait a minute, we can do better, and, uh, and it makes a difference. It has. Okay. There were just a number of other articles you might want to look at. And then I have to say, I am, uh, oh, my award from uh, the uh, uh, YWCA Tribute to Outstanding Women in 1996 was Barbara Frank for Volunteer Services. So there's that. And then because I'm a feminist and have, long, have been a longtime member of the League of Women Voters, we had a tea where we dressed up as historic figures, and this is me dressed as Elizabeth Cady Stanton, who is a heroine of mine. And uh, she had um, the, the strange outfit. She's wearing bloomers. Bloomers were, there's even a bloomer mill here, I think, named after an area, named after Amelia Bloomer. And these were a big stride forward because the women had always worn these long, dresses that, of course, dragged and in the dirt and were just a lot of trouble to take care of. Well, then they could go to shorter ones, but to be modest, they had to wear these bloomers, which were kind of long, a little ruffle around the leg. Anyway, it was supposed to be a big advance, and so anyway, in my outfit, I, I made that. But we've come a long way since then, thank goodness. But that was kind of fun. Uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton was one of the stalwarts, the, one of the most important feminists during the 19th century, a very, very important woman. Okay, and then because environment has been the passion in my life, very, very important to me, but family and, and people are also important, and this is my family, my husband, uh, daughter and son, and uh, son, son-in-law, and daughter-in-law, and these are the four grandchildren. So that was taken a couple of years ago. I did get it. Here was my award from the Sierra Club. Uh, special Service Award in 1998 for 30 years of dedicated service to the Cooley Region Group and the club as a whole. So that was that was nice. I got to go out to uh, San Francisco, excuse me, and got an award. I think the picture might have been in this pile. Maybe not. Anyway, where I'm standing with the president, my husband and I. But that was kind of a nice. You don't do this sort of thing for a pat on the back. But a pat on the back is nice when it does come. That isn't why you do it, but it is. I was very involved with the Gunderson Lutheran merger because I was on the hot with the clinic. I was uh, in the hospital. I was president of the board at the time, and uh, so spent lots of hours and many frustrations in that process. And then I was on the Wisconsin Conservation Corps board, which was a NAT, which was a state organization that uh, worked on uh, public service projects with using 19 to 25 year olds and giving them jobs and and uh, was a very successful program kind of based loosely on the old con civilian conservation corps i don't know if you've heard of that the old ccc and uh, that was something important that i enjoyed doing this was about the lacrosse river valley okay so family and people are very important to me the environment is very important to me and then the other part of my life is the uh, is art and I've, uh, I've done, uh, I, I have a book, I don't know if there's any 
point in looking at this. Much of my art is uh, has to do with nature and natural things, flowers, landscapes, and so forth. So I have a book of that. I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of reports. I do a lot of articles. I do a lot of lobbying and letter writing, especially on issues. But uh, brochures, here are some brochures I've done over the years. And these you can have. I have copies of those, so that you can just have. And I remember one time, I, I do. I go to a lot of hearings, and I remember one. At the time, I don't. I didn't put a date on. Boy, that's a mistake. Out of date everything. This would have been about 20 years ago. There were two Senator Swans in in Madison. One was a black swan, and one was a white swan. That's how they told them apart. One was a. a Negro, obviously, and the other one a uh, white. And it was interesting. This Senator Monroe Swan of Milwaukee, who was black, was very uh, a very conservative uh, man, and he wanted to, re to instead of, he wanted to oppose ratifying an equal rights amendment in Wisconsin. So I uh, I went to the hearing, and my comment was. Senator Swan and ladies and gentlemen, to rescind ratification of the Equal Rights Amendment would be to publicly proclaim that women are indeed not full-fledged adult citizens. I, for one, vehemently object to any such assertion. I find it particularly ironic that after the long and unfair struggle blacks have had to achieve equal rights, that you, a black, should be initiating legislation to grant women less than full and equal rights under the law solely on the basis of their sex. Senator Swan's second-class citizenship was not good enough for blacks, and it's not good enough for women either. <laughs> that was kind of fun to do. He laughed afterwards when I talked to him. I think he was doing it just strictly for political thing reasons. But again, when these kind of outrageous things happen, you just have to counter them. And that's kind of been my task over the last 40 years, and I expect to die with my boots on up till the very end doing this kind of thing. June Shomi, I don't know if any of you talked to June Shomi in this process. Oh, I hope you've asked her because she's a heroine of mine and has been, works on a lot of other issues, not, not so much the environment, but a very powerful woman in the community. So I've rambled. Any other questions? feminist. Oh boy, there are books written about what a feminist is. A feminist is someone who thinks women are important, have uh, valuable contributions to make, need to be uh, listened to, uh, respected. I'm, being a feminist doesn't mean you don't like men. I'm happily married a woman. I have sons. I, I just think that women overall have not gotten a lot of recognition until more recent years, and uh, my goal was to help remedy that, you know, even in terms of not being able to vote, uh, uh, not uh, being recognized as authors uh, or contributors. And then um, my other question was, do you think that environmental issues have decreased or become, like, more common than, like, when you started working with the Well, I'm not sure if your question is, are things getting better or worse? Yeah. I think they're getting worse. Uh, many things have gotten better. Many, you know, we've done some, definitely some improvements. But overall, we're doing some very severe things. And one of them is all of the uh, compounds, the chemical compounds we're releasing, the artificial compounds we're releasing into the atmosphere, into the into the environment. Uh, hormone disruptors, many of them, that affect our our intellectual development, that affect our behavior, that affect uh, uh, our health in many, many ways. I'm a cancer survivor, and I'm I'm totally persuaded that my my breast cancer was related to hormones, uh, you know, hormone-like uh, products in the environment. So. So, and global warming then is the big, big problem right now. And so whatever we can do for carbon dioxide is just terribly important. And there are some interesting uh, experiments underway. Sierra Club Magazine, I don't think I brought a copy, the latest one, uh, talks about these huge tubes, because so much of it comes from coal-fired power plants, these huge tubes that would have uh, a bacterial action 
that would actually digest and alter the, the carbon dioxide right there. And then you're left with some kind of refuse, which could be used as some very benign you know, land deposit. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, and will terribly have have a huge impact on on our economies, uh, on uh, well, they're they're suggesting it will alter the big uh, water motions that you know the currents, the uplifting, and the you know which have have basically stabilized climate worldwide, and now if we start changing that or slowing them down what you know it, it's a huge experiment just as they're talking about the polar bears you know not surviving because the ice is melting and it's melting very very quickly and you know how many of you saw the what was the movie name about the penguins I can't think the long march or March of the Penguins. March of the penguins thank you and they're talking about you know how they will be impacted as well because you know, they'll be so much closer to the edge that they're more vulnerable than to predation by what eats them? Well, I assume uh, well, I don't know if seals eat them. What are the yeah, uh, walruses? Yeah. The when? Walruses and polar bears. Well, and the polar bears would too. Yeah, because they the, the reason they go so far inland is to keep the young safe, and uh, that would be altered. So, so it's it's an issue we're working on very hard. Coal plants, coal plants are the, are a big culprit, but so many of our manufacturing processes do. And and the U.S. has been a, just a terrible player in this, by saying we can't we can't we can't fix it or we don't need to or it would affect our economy. Well, so will global warming. So we just right now we have an administration that is not committed to doing the right thing by the environment and that's unfortunate because traditionally the Republican Party was very good on, on environmental issues. Think of Teddy Roosevelt. So, uh, so we need to do an awful lot more politically but many states are, are taking action. Wisconsin has done some things to curb the release of, of carbon dioxide and doing better with coal plants and uh, Many communities are becoming clean cities. That's another program where they agree to reduce by 30 to 60 percent their carbon dioxide emissions. And I think we've got about almost 300 cities that have signed up to do that. So, so there are a lot of people who are concerned, and I, I feel, I feel hope. Yeah, I feel, I definitely feel hopeful. But it takes this kind of effort, and I've been lucky because I have, I had jobs off and on, but I haven't worked full time for, you know long time. My husband uh, obviously supported me and now he's retired and he's doing all the, the all the volunteer stuff too. But it just requires a lot of time and energy to see that our society does right. You know, it means electing the right people. It means writing letters and saying when issues come up and uh, encourage thanking them when they do it right, criticizing when they do it wrong, going to a meeting, hearing to hearing. So. Do you think that you talk to your kids a lot or your grandkids a lot about what you feel about the environment and do you think that and are they like doing anything to help the environment right now or yeah, they're definitely doing some things. Uh, I you know, the kinds of cars they drive and, and a lot of the actions they take and a lot of the the uh, decisions they make, yeah, I think they're they're affected. I wish they were doing more, but then I wish everyone was doing more, yeah. including myself. So it, we just have to keep trying. It's uh, and be conscious of it. You know, don't uh, you know walk or bike, and sometimes instead of taking your car, uh, try to try to live lighter on the land, and and try to make sure that we understand our actions and what the impact is and how we can counter. Them. And join groups like the Sierra Club, which um. does lobby and does a lot of the good work. Do you feel that you've like influenced your children and your grandchildren about helping out with the environment as they were growing up? Yes, I think so. Uh, I think uh, I think they're very much aware of how strong that feel and how uh, how important it is. And we're very supportive of our giving the land, for example, to the Mississippi Valley Conservancy. 
and every so often I get them to write letters and talk to their legislators. And they live in both of them live in Minnesota, but uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's an important part of a positive solution that you, you engage and involve many more people because. You can't do it alone. You can start alone. You can really only take care of yourself, but you can also try to involve others and engage them. Um, that's really all the questions I had. Okay, fair enough then for me to ask one. Or are you running out of time? No, we have plenty of time. Oh, you have plenty of time. Okay. So. So why are you doing this project? <laughs> what class, for example? Or, I mean, you know, give me some of the mundane specifics here. Oh, for literature. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm, I thought it would have come out of a social studies or something. Okay, in literature, how, how does that affect? We're, make, we, um, we're making advanced podcasts for iTunes. Hmm. Hmm, okay. Okay, and that's how it evolved. All right. We're going to take these interviews and turn it into about a three to eight minute podcast. Oh. Which is going to be really fun concerning 32 minutes so far. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so you have plenty to work with. Well, good. And that's what the scans in the picture are for. So when somebody like loads so up their have iPod, photos they'll see to pictures along with what they listen to. Hmm, okay. Good. Good. It's a brave new world. I, I practically live on my computer, but I don't, uh, I don't know all the bells and whistles. That's for sure. We're like, I think we're the number one podcast in Wisconsin right now. Oh, really? Probably like in the world. No, a lot but of there's a, not just podcasts are just for schools. Hmm. If you have an Apple computer, you can make a podcast with Garage. All right. Well, okay. Thank All you right. for coming. You're welcome.